不平等に人を助けるイタドリ 
something that Itadori would be doing, even though Shigeru himself normally wouldn't do such a thing, as he didn't even want to save the people in that juvenile facility in the first place. He feels that a lot of people he thought to be good are given unfairness in life, like his sister who was cursed and fallen into a coma, and Itadori, who ate Sukuna's finger, then received the death penalty. His personal sense of justice drives him to help and save them in his own brand of heroism stemmed from his ego of choosing who he will save and who he won't save. The idea of good people affects Fushiguro deeply that out of respect for Itadori who had died, he does something that he usually wouldn't do. From now on this video will contain heavy spoilers from the manga, so if you're not caught up with it, please proceed with caution. Possibly the biggest curse in Jujutsu Kaisen is bloodlines, something that plays a major role in the character arcs of multiple characters in the story. Megumi's rare case makes it look like he's free, but that soon changes when Megumi is the person who is demanded to become the new head of his clan, if Gojo happens to fall from power. Something that will serve the clan a lot by having the person with the biggest potential of strength to be their new leader. But Fushiguro being the person we know him as will without a doubt refuse it, because he already considers himself not a member from the clan and proudly replies with his mother's family name that his father once took when he left. But also out of respect for Maki, who aims to take the seat of the next head, something that will mean a lot for her and for the clan in general. There isn't a way that he might end up becoming the next head, because that would simply be the result of losing Gojo and making things more complicated for Maki's future. He already is someone that wants little to nothing to do with the clans, and is exactly what a subject of such ideals wouldn't be like. Unlike the most obvious character that is technically the opposite of Shigeru, which is Norito Shikamo from the Kyoto branch, who not only is someone that is expected and aiming to be the head of his clan, he also sees his position as something very important and he values rules and order more than anything else. Unlike Megumi who is mostly an emotional character and doesn't believe he has any ties with the Zen clan. As long as he can keep doing what he believes is right, with the mindset of growth and getting stronger, he doesn't wish for more. But that exactly is where his biggest flaw lies. The thing that holds him back the most from getting stronger is his lack of selfishness. Something that Gojo makes him understand by telling him that no matter what the situation is, the sorcerer always dies alone. In comparing himself, Yuji and Megumi, Gojo makes Megumi realize that in order to reach the heights he aims towards, he needs to act more selfishly. As fundamentally, if Shigeru is someone compassionate, he focuses on cooperating and matching his level to people around him first, which actually hinders his growth of ability because his nature as a sorcerer is on the opposite side. To envision a stronger version of himself and to grow beyond what he thinks is even possible, that working together with people is ideal, but you need to think of yourself more if you want to grow. Surpass your limits by taking risks and acting like what you envision. This is something that we see often in Jujutsu Kaisen, the difference between those that seek to be on top and those that feel comfortable staying where they are whether strong or not. Good examples of this are Nanami, who retreats when he feels like this is not a situation that he can surely solve alone. He didn't try to defeat Mahito when he found out that it will be hard due to his inability to hurt his soul. From the two options of retreating or to keep fighting until Mahito is weakened and runs out of cursed energy, he chose the former without even trying to do something he isn't 100% capable of. Maybe that's the reason Nanami stayed at the level of a normal grade 1 sorcerer and didn't reach the level of performing a domain expansion. He didn't push himself beyond his capabilities. The other example being Jugo, who is extremely powerful. He can take on any sorcerer other than Gojo and maybe the rest of special grades, 
with ease. But he felt like he is already strong enough and didn't seek to surpass that, something that Sukuna tells him. It's that difference of hunger that makes the gap between the strong and the strongest, and Megumi suffers from that. But Megumi's lack of desire to greedily grow stronger is not just because of that, it's mainly because he is aware of the ace up his sleeve that he can use whenever he is desperate to take down the enemy with him. It's that reliance he has on that specific summoning that he doesn't seek to make the most use out of his technique and the readiness to throw away his life at any moment. Something that even Nanami takes note of in their encounter with Dagon, but Fushiguro like before responds by saying that he isn't going to throw away his life meaninglessly, but not too long after, he does exactly that. When desperately unable to fight against Haruta, he summons Maharaga, finally, and almost dies if it wasn't for Sukuna saving him. Mahuraga is a huge obstacle and catalyst for Megumi, both mentally, because if he stops relying on it, he will make the most use out of his technique, but in a strength level way too, because when Megumi finally tames him, he will reach a height no one before him ever did, and paves the way for him to claim the title of the strongest. Now that Gojo is gone, Megumi has a lot of things he has to deal with, more than to stabilize Tokyo back, it is the responsibility that he always feels over keeping Yuji as Sukuna's vessel alive, that probably will demand a lot out of Megumi. In addition to losing Gojo and the waking of Tsumiki as one of Brain's victims, the possible loss of Nobara and having to deal with someone wanting to kill him for a position, Megumi needs all the strength he can muster, literally and figuratively to be able to survive the coming of near future, even though ironically he is one that is readily dying any time. Megumi has three things he needs to accomplish by the end of the story. One is coming to a mutual understanding of the morality he has and the way it differs from his foil Yuji. Second being able to tame Maharaga, making him possibly the strongest character in the world by the time he makes the most out of his ability. The same ability that rivaled the six eyes and the limitless even without Mahoraga. Megumi was set to become the strongest from the very start. And the final one being able to accept himself and break the barrier of the lack of confidence that's holding him back from achieving what he aims for. <laughs> <laughs> Megumi doesn't have to go against what he believes in, but he also doesn't have to let it define who he is and stay the same. He just needs to be himself, doing what he believes is right in a healthy merger of control and desire. It has taken some time for him to come to learn this due to living in such a rare situation in a society that reductively categorized. But he is slowly learning and in a setting that makes it so difficult and so rare for people to be exactly who they want to be outside of set roles, this is a remarkable thing. Someone who continuously tries to find a place for himself in a world that already has a place for him which he doesn't want to be in. And as someone who left it behind but is still hunted by set rules and morals, he is the ideal character to take us through this world that would seem to have a lot of expectations for someone in his specific situation and his specific mentality. He is the ideal sorcerer. He is our guide into the injustices, intricacies and layers of Jujutsu Kaisen. And through understanding his shadow, he aims to transcend above it all to find what most of us are really looking for when it comes right down to it, the understanding of oneself. Even though it is very much still a work in progress, Megumi uses his judgement for good, he shaped it and something balanced came out of it, so he is able to see the value in confronting himself and evolving from within. He is constantly stumbling, unsure and questioning his morals 
and place in the world in order to find an ideal that he is comfortable with going with. But slowly and surely he is learning about who he is, how he wants to live, what he wants to do, how he wants to do it, and the type of person and sorcerer he aspires to be. And he will continue to struggle in this difficult world to find a suitable mindset because now as opposed to earlier in the story deep down he knows his weak points and more or less also knows how to deal with each and every one of them and grow beyond that many thanks for watching